An angel of the Lord came by my bed. It had rainbow wings about 12 foot high and it had a white garment on. And over to the, the left of this angel, kind of behind him, stood Jesus. And he was on the right of Jesus. And uh, Jesus smiled at me. And the angel just spoke this. It said, come and see the glory of God. And immediately I was out of my room and I was standing outside the gates of heaven. Jesus wasn't there, but the angel was. The gates were a mile high and made out of uh, some kind of, it looked like wrought iron, iron, but it wasn't, it was pearl designed, you know, and it, and it was one pearl, but all kind of lights came from the gates. And two angels was on each side of the gates and they were tall and they had gold hair that was turned under on the bottom. And they were the keeper of the gates, okay? So the big angel that was with me walked over and he talked to them. And they, one of them went inside the gate and they brought out a book of my life and it had my name on it. Mary Catherine Baxter had it on the front and the back side. And there uh, the angel opened up my book and he read something and he said, she can come into the city. So uh, I went into the city with this angel with the beautiful wings, you know. And we come into a grassy area, it's grass everywhere. Oh my Lord. And the grass looked like I had diamonds in it, you know. And then there was flowers. Oh, man, there was flowers over to my right. Big clumps of flowers that would open up their petals and sing music to you. And then over to my left, there was uh, five men with white garments on standing around a pedestal. And then I look back over here, up on a hillside was many trees, many, many fruits on these trees. And I noticed there were families, lots of families of every nationality were standing around talking, some on the grass, they were sitting, sitting at picnic tables. And they had little children too, and they were picking the fruit and eating it, but no juice come on their hand. And I'm looking at all of this and I'm hearing high praises of God wonderful praises of God. And I remember hearing chimes in heaven and music everywhere. And as I watched this, you know, I was in awe. The beauty, there was no decay. If one of the pebbles like on the flowers, I knew if they fell off, they wouldn't decay and just grow another flower. And there's no law of death in heaven, see, or no dying. And then the angel said to me, come and see the glory of thy God. And I went over with him to where the men were. And I saw an angel come down a pathway that uh, had beautiful long hair. Now in heaven, I saw angels with wings. Some did not have wings. They had different garments on for whatever job they were gonna do. In heaven, they keep accurate records of everything. Heaven has an order to it. And in the Old Testament, it said two women angels carrying an epod. So this one coming down the pathway looked like a woman angel. And sometimes you could see right through them, they're transparent light, okay? And some play music and you, they have big, big garments with pockets for flutes and things. And, but sometimes they can just move real quick and they're gone or they can fly. Uh, it's just awesome how heaven is and then these Men are making a diamond. And I watched them uh, read this thing from the angel. And the angel with me said, they're gonna make a diamond for this person's mansion here in heaven. And they take it to Jesus. He's the master builder. And the man said to me, whatever this person did today, fed the poor, prayed for the sick, whatever they did, they're gonna get a reward in heaven. They're laying their treasures up in heaven. So I watched them as they designed, made this substance. It came out on a tray, they poured it on a tray. And one of the men there was Spanish. He had beautiful black hair and smiling and he took his hands and put in this liquid like material and it turned into a rose and music come out of the rose. And they, he, they designed this stone, and it was about this high and this long, and flowers all in it that would sing. Can you imagine a mansion made like that? 
we go up the left side of a pathway and he said, come and see the glory of God. And I'm moving and I see things, okay? Over to my right, I see chariots suspended in the air. I don't see the buildings yet, but I see these beautiful chariots. And I see like carriers where you carry people in this white shape, bullet-like thing. And then the chariot of God I saw. His wheel was so huge. The only way I know to tell you how high it was, as high as the Empire State Building. And then on the wheels, they were on fire, but never burn up in jewels this big in the wheels. It was God's chariot. And then I look back over here, I'm in awe at everything I'm seeing, and I see 50 white stallions, horses. Their skin looked like white satin. It was so beautiful to see that. The backsides of the horses were around four feet across. Their feet were this big, and they were at least 30 foot high. And I looked over there, and the angel said, uh, observe and look. And I looked, and they were standing side by side, all 50 of them. And there was a woman in front of them. I knew she was a redeemed. She had been a saint that went to heaven, and she was redeemed. You know. Her clothing was so beautiful, pale pink dress. And she stood in front of the horses, and she said, All creatures shall praise the Lord. You will go before the Lord, and you will bow, and you will praise ye the Lord. All those horses bowed down, opened their mouth, and all of them said, Praise ye the Lord at the same time. And I thought, How beautiful, you know? And then we kept walking, and there was a wall and I touched it with my hand, it was pure platinum. And it was like the wall had its own wheel or something. You could feel it like, you could touch it like it was touching you back. It was really beautiful. And I was looked down, I was walking on streets of gold. And the angel said, I'm gonna take you and show you the record rooms. And he said, it's in the word of God. And said, there we record things that happen on the earth in people's lives. He said, everybody ever born on the earth has a record book in heaven. Next, Mary Baxter tells how she saw angels who actually keep records of your giving and your attitude as you give. Next, on Stories of the Supernatural. Mary Baxter was given a vision of heaven, complete with angels and beautiful landscapes. But she was told that angels don't just sing all day long. They also keep records. So he took me to this record room. And all above all these doors was a uh, number, or also a, an alphabet number of someone's last name. And he said, there's thousands of these rooms up here, but we keep accurate records, is what he told me. And he said, when someone gets born again, their message comes up here and we actually, we're gonna show you what happens. So all at once I am translated with this angel outside heaven over the earth. He said, God has spoken, I'm to show you something about the record room so you could tell the people on the earth. So he said, now I have, God has given me the permission and the power to do this. He said, we're gonna to go to a church service on the earth and you're gonna actually see when someone gets saved. What happens? What you preach the message and and you call them to the altar. Well, we're going to show you what happens in the spirit. I said okay. So we end up going down and there's this church and all at once we're inside the church, but they can't see us. And he said, uh, "What do you see?" I said, "Well, I see a lot of angels. There was twelve angels, two on the platform, one in the back of the church with a pen in his hand." And that, the man said, that was with me, the angel said, there's also a big church on the top of the, the church. I mean, an angel on top of the church. He's in charge of all these other angels. He said, every church in the earth that's ordained by God has these angels. And he said, look and, look and learn. So I looked and the preacher was preaching, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon the Lord while he's near. And then the preacher said, we're gonna take up an offering. And as he did, uh, the angels, there were two angels with record books came and every time someone gave an offering or a tithe, they wrote their name down and how much they gave. 
and the attitude they gave it in. Isn't that something? And then they uh, did all that, prayed over everything. The angels helped them pray over the money. And these things are very serious to God, okay? And then they put the name of the church, name of the pastor, how old it is. And it's really an order. So after all that was done, the man begins to preach again about sins. And in the back door opens up, a man comes in. He was very drunk. So he comes up to the front. He said, I'm an old sinner. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. And the preacher said, well, son, do you really know what you're saying? He said, yes. said, I've run and run from God for years. I want to give my life to him. This is what he said. And so two men came down from the pastor, went down and talked to him and started opening up the Bible and reading it to him, how to be saved. And immediately two powerful angels appeared out of nowhere on each side of this man. And the angel with me said, we're going to show you something about the change of the heart. And we're going to show you what sin does to people. And all around this man's body was black bands, like, like microphone ropes and things. And the angel said, he's in bondage. But as he confesses his sins to God and asks forgiveness in the name of Jesus, those bands will be bursted. And he said, look what we do. And the man said, well, I'm an old drunk and a liar. God forgive me. And in Jesus' name, wash me in your blood. And when he did, one of the big angels touched his band and burst into fire and melted off. Every time he confessed a sin to God, said, uh, I'm a manipulator, you know, and all these things. Uh, he said, I'm an adulteress. He said, Lord, forgive me in Jesus' name. And everything was from his heart. And then fi and all the bands began to fall off, and he began to get really, really warm. An angel touched his heart, and his heart was black before, and it turned crimson red. And I watched this as a man straightened up and praised the Lord. And then we, we left the service. And the angel of the Lord said, three days has passed. I want to show you another scene. So he took me to a little apartment. There was the same man laying on the couch. And the angel of, there was two angels in the room or three. And said, he's dying. And the man grabbed his chest and he had a heart attack. He died. And his soul came, I seen it, come right out of his body and stand beside him. And he was an outline like a negative on a film. And he was transparent looking. You really couldn't tell who he was, you know, then. And the man said, uh, the, the two angels stepped over to him and said, we're here to escort you to heaven. And they began to escort him to heaven and I got to go with them. And they brought the man to a place of heaven where was the river of life. The river of life was water that anybody could walk on, swim in, go under, you were not drowned. It was beautiful. But on each side of the river was trees for the healing of the nations. They would pull the leaves off and give them to the man to eat and this water to drink. So he went through the river of life and came out on the other side and you could hear his family shouting. In fact, the redeemed and angels was everywhere watching this shouting. And the angel said to me, he's going to come back over this side and we're going to see what we do. So he took me to a corridor where there was all doors, archways, and they were open. One was a room of crowns. One was a room of robes. One was a room of gowns. And the angel said, because he just got saved, he only gets a gown of salvation, but he will go to school here in heaven. And I watched him bring the man over, but you couldn't tell he was really a man yet because he was still transparent looking. And they brought him into this room, and I could hear him laughing with him. And I, I knew that they were trying on his robe. And when they brought him out, the man looked 80 when he died. He looked like 29 or 30 years old. He had jet black hair, taller, smiling. And the angels said, we knew which was your robe. We were just playing with you. And said, come, we're going to try on your crown. Said, you get a crown of salvation. So they took him into the other room. And you could hear him laughing and playing with him. And he came out with his crown on a tray. Now the crown had uh, uh, gold, just solid gold, with little spikes on it. I don't know how you would call that. But they said that God has to put the crown on your head. That's what he told him. When we return, a glimpse of more angels, a heavenly band, 
and the throne of God. Next, on Stories of the Supernatural. Mary Baxter was given a vision of heaven, complete with angels and beautiful landscapes. She was shown what angels do on earth, and now she will be taken to the very throne of God. They, t they uh, took this man before the throne of God and his book was there. And God, uh, the throne of God, is, there's glory and power and majesty. And in front of the throne are thousands of seats. The children's seats are solid gold and they sit in them with diamonds big as your fist. And then from there, you look out of pianos are 40 feet across. It takes three angels to play them. Trumpets 35 feet long, big angels are blowing a trumpet. And then you see the, the glory of God, the rainbow above the throne. You see uh, the four beasts uh, that are 50 feet high. It is so awesome. And all you see is a huge cloud with an outline of a man inside. And you're looking at all this majesty and you're wondering, Lord Jesus, why doesn't everybody on the world want to serve you? And that's why he shows us heaven, so people will want to serve God and go to heaven, you know. So I'm watching all of this, and they're holding the man up in front of the throne because he's still scared. And then uh, I seen a man's hand come out of the cloud and pick up his book of life. And on the altar was the Lamb's book of life, which his name had been recorded in three days before. So I'm looking at this, and all at once, the Lord's voice, voice spoke, and it was like many, many waters. And I heard him say this, I see another one's been redeemed by my son's blood. He said, Jesus is the only sacrifice. He said, another one's been redeemed from the devil's hand by my son's blood. Ain't that something? And then the Lord speaks to the man and he said, I see you receive my son on a certain day at a certain time on the earth, and I see the message you, you received him from. And he said uh, to the man, he said, welcome into the joy of the Lord. And uh, the angels brought the tray to God, and he took the crown off, and he put it on his head. And when he did, God's big hand went inside there. He said this to him, said, there'll be no more death here. There'll be no more dying, no more pain, for I make all things new. He said, welcome into the joy of the Lord. And God reached his hand out and wiped the man's tears away because he was crying. And he said, there'll be no more crying here. And what they did, they put the crown on and he began to shout and do leaps. And his family all come up, were wishing him, uh, they were praying, shouting, worshiping, whatever you do, they were happy that he was there. And then I was taken by this angel back again uh, to the Room of Tears, where this man was in the purple garment. And uh, there was uh, all types of beautiful books in this room, too. But it's in Psalms 56, verse 7, 8, and 9. Thou tellest my wondering, put thou my tears into bottles, are they not in thy book? When I cried unto the Lord, then my enemies turned back. This I know God is for me, and God I will put my trust I'll not be afraid of what man will do unto me. So what I've learned that we're fighting good, I mean evil with good and with the living word of God. And many people don't know that. There's knowledge, there's lack of phantom. It's true, not of food right now, but there's a lack of phantom of the word of God. And when God wants you, if you want God and you're hungry to know him, he'll fill you.